In 2015, an experiment on the rat's behavior had been conducted at the SUNY Downstate New York Center. Neural science research team, led by Dr. John Chapin, gave an electric stimulus to sensation area and reward the center of rat's brain. In order to control the movement of rat, they gave a stimulus to the somatosensory cortical area. Then they gave a stimulus to medial forebrain bundle, making rats feel pleasure. It was able to control with the tiny electrode on the back of a rat. A few tests later, they could make rats do unusual behaviors. According to this experiment, researchers have maintained their opinion that every living thing doesn't have the free will. Based on the belief of experts, Mark Zuckerberg established a company named Building8. This company specializes the brain-computer interface. Elon Musk bought Neuralink, the brain-computer interface company. He is preparing the treatment of nervous disease using neural dust, developed by Dr. Dong Jin Seo. Furthermore, it might help data processing of human brain. The projects which Zuckerberg and Musk have been developing are just the beginning of the long way. Ultimately, controlling neuronal firing and preparing for an unpredictable future is their purpose. We don't believe easily that human beings are not the one who has the free will. But science already shakes the foundation of the liberalism. Technologies such as artificial intelligence and Internet of Things are the example. Musk insists that the range of responsibility of AI has to be restricted only for supporting the human being. On the other side, Zuckerberg presumes AI is the advanced technology with no limits. He is even developing technology controlling humans' feeling. What would the world be when the human being eventually conquers the complicated algorithms, which making a machine feeling and reacting like us? At the company, human resource team can deal with employees' psychosocial problems more privately than now. At the educational institution, teachers can give their main roles to robots and spend their time to counsel students. This will be realized when the AI is used only for human assistant. Currently, AI is evolving themselves to learn by itself. One fear is if the hundred of AI makes different kinds of patterns, their algorithms might crash into each other. In short, the human being has to consider philosophical issues before developing every single AI. Otherwise, AI might cause a huge confusion to both AI and humans. Science cannot exist in the human society by itself because it has been grown with the help of the imaginational systems. The author, Yuval Harari, maintains the imaginational systems have to be seen with the aspect of substantiality. Does a soldier who got injured in the war suffer pain? Does the war itself feel pain? Does a man who starves feel hungry? Does a deficit account of him have a pain? If something doesn't feel pain, it is not substantiality. Interpreting the imaginational systems would be more important in the future. By studying history, we might make totally different results. The imaginational systems have been made for Homo sapiens' survivor. Simultaneously, because of it, innocent people used to be killed. Humankind in 21st century, who worries about it, have prepared evolving themselves from Homo sapiens to Homo deus. Homo deus can be defined as a life controller using science technologies, so we have to pay attention to science technology. Will the project led by Zuckerberg and Mark help humans to evolve themselves into Homo deus?
Yuval Harari gives some questions to us at the end of this book. When the algorithms with higher intelligence than human be shown up, what would be happen to society, politics, and daily life? What is more valuable between intelligence and consciousness? Is the organism just an algorithm? Is the living organism just a data process? In order to live together with technologies without sacrificing ourselves, we have to agonize the way of nanotech, big data, genetics, and other technologies.